Good morning, folks. We had a geomagnetic reverberation storm yesterday, but the bigger story is that the earthquake drought is over. Big one, striking during the alert period yesterday. Let's get right to it over at spaceweathernews.com. Folks, solar flaring is dropping back down as the big sunspots have turned away and the next ones incoming don't look too scary. Actually, more of surface plagues than umbral cores. We have not seen any further eruptive activity in Earth's direction, and after yesterday's one reverberation storm, the solar wind and magnetic field of Earth are calming down. However, we do have more solar wind on the way from this northern coronal hole, impact probably late tomorrow or early Thursday, but it has also set the earthquake watch. Magnitude 7.7 struck just east of Kamchatka, five days short of six months without such an event. And folks, right now, despite blot echoes on the southern migration fault from there and earth spot lows spinning nearby, it doesn't look like anyone won the contest and claimed the $500 in ticket to observing the Frontier 2018. If you think you did get it, post it in the forums quickly because otherwise, when nobody wins a magnitude 7 event, prize goes up $100, so it's now $600 and a ticket to the conference. Noteworthy that we also took a 6.4 on the Peruvian coastline. This one actually struck my red alert zone down there due to blood echoes and intertropical convergence zone anomalies. Up next, folks, this animation comes from Chandra. They're peeking in on one of the closest massive molecular dust and gas clouds to Earth, W51. They have taken images in both infrared and x-ray for comparison, and what we're going to be looking for is massive stars hiding in the blazing hot shroud around the mass, and also that central torus ring seen in the animation. Yellow is infrared, blue is x-ray. Between them and the composite, you should indeed be able to pick out that torus. Up next, folks, a citizen science project detected a brown dwarf only 34 parsecs away. It's only about 100 light years. While it's not high on the list of closest or fastest moving or dangerous or anything like that, the backyard astronomers in the Citizen Science Project aim to soon find ultra-cold wide dwarfs and maybe even Planet 9. Not X, 9. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun to check out the colder aspects of July. We discussed Chile yesterday, but how about that major snowfall this winter in the U.S. sticking around in the middle of summer? Northern Hemisphere broke a monthly cold record for the planet about a week ago. Deer Park, Washington broke their daily low yesterday by three whole degrees. And while July started off cold in parts of Australia, they have transitioned to cold with cold in the forecast. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. If you didn't see our Amundsen Sea Low Deeper Look episode, that is very much worth your time, and we very much appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.